I've learned in this lifetime that anything you wasn't born with, you can do without. Word. <laughs> bugs hello there bellas if you have not already done so please remember to like share the facebook subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com today's looky lookies would be our black uh jt rizza shades they come in black or brown all the eyewear are still on the sale and our ultimate animal print turban all of the head wear is on sale i think the prices are between 10 and 25 dollars for the eyewear and the headwear all of it's on sale and if you are not already a part of our book club please hit the patreon link below and or the join button here on the youtube and for a small monthly fee of five dollars you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, I guess that's the reason why people say I am a pimp. Because, man, I like women friends. I don't care that much about men friends. They get jealous of me. And they start doing devious things towards me. It always happens. Rhonda Graham went out of her way to get my attention, but in a different way. She was extremely, extremely good, man. But she was a woman and women. And women, I guess that means that she was capable of being several different types of women to him. When I first started with her, I was up at my house, so I was with her almost daily. When I built Bollock, I'd be in the studio recording all the time and she'd be in the office by herself. And man, she started doing everything to get noticed. She, she would let her shit pack up on her desk to the ceiling and be there until 9 or 10 at night in the office like she was so busy. There wasn't that much work to do. She just wanted some attention. The way he think is outrageous to me. Like her... Having a junky desk equates I come in here and pay attention to me. Early on when we were playing Las Vegas a lot, Rhonda found this house up there in Mount Olympus. I didn't know how much the house cost, but I said, Rhonda, I'm going to get you that house. She's so happy, right? So when we go to Las Vegas to play, I put the money on the table and say, if I win, it's the money for your house. If I lose, you don't get it. What kind of bullshit games is that? Either buy me the house or not. Don't make a bet on it. Anyway, he won the bet while he down there at the tables gambling. Remember early on in the book, he was saying how uh, gambling is one of his uh, demons. But them reckless people love to gamble. Then we went out on the road and she moved. She took her clothes out of the house and she left all the furniture, everything in the house, left the door wide open and went out on the road. People could have gone in and taken everything. It just so happened that Mel Johnson was going up to check on the kids and things and he passed by and saw Rhonda's door open. She did that just to get my attention too. What? So listen, I have a lot going on right now, guys. I do. I'm trying to uh, find a part-time job. Still trying to figure out what the next book is going to be. I think it's going to be... I'm not going to tell. You know, maintaining the house, taking care of Lou, because Lou is a child, you know. And then my wife is going through a lot also. So... I'm just trying to keep everything together. And one day, my wife left out the house, and she said, baby, you left the door open. I was like, okay, I mean, uh, okay, I forgot to lock the door. She said, no, you left your car door open. I said, meaning a jaw? She said, yes, and baby, it stormed that night. 
All right. Luckily, the car was just fine. It wasn't no problems the next day. But I'm not doing that to get my wife's attention. I'm doing it because I got a lot going on. So the way I think is just crazy to me. Finally, she pulled the thing that broke the camel's back. She got so insecure, she became kind of destructive. People be calling in. That movie, Car Wash, that was supposed to be our movie. They called me about it first, but when they went to Rhonda's office, Rhonda never called them back. She would do shit like that. No, that's not to get your attention, I Now, that right there, that definitely deserves the ding. You know, I might have even terminated her. For a situation like that, because that's a lot of money, Rhonda. I love you, but you didn't cost it the Ike and Tina Turner and Co. a lot of money. So I don't think that has anything to do with attention. I think she just really, 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 really fucked up. When I found out that she wasn't returning phone calls and wasn't continuing with me to get answers to different things, I told Tina about it. I said Rhonda was pissing me off so bad that sometimes I felt like just knocking her ass off her feet. Tina said, Ike, if you feel that way about it, it's best you let her go. Now, the part that we're about to get into is when I reflect back on uh, Young T.T.'s book, Eddie Armani, The Real T, because he showed us a different Tina Turner, one that can be the type of person that throws rocks and hide their hands. I said, maybe I should let her go, but I want to keep her salary going. Every time we worked, I wanted to give her the same amount she would have gotten if she had been working too. I wanted to keep that up until she got a job. Tina was cold. She said, if that's what you want to do, but I wouldn't give her nothing. So Rhonda so came strolling into the studio and we sat down to talk to her. Tina said, Ike wants to give you your salary, the same money you always get every time we play until you get a job. She said, oh no, Tina, I wouldn't want you to do that. Tina said, I'm glad you understand. I would have said, you gotta take it. I don't mind, but Tina said, I'm glad you understand. Well, I thought Rhonda was gone, but she wasn't. She went up to my house and started living at my house with the kids. So that was what Rhonda was doing until me and Tina broke up. But Ike did not see this as a sign that perhaps the end was coming. I never thought it would happen in life. I thought Tina and me were too close for something like that to happen. But man, I've learned in this lifetime that anything you wasn't born with, you can do without word. Tina wanted, I believe, to leave before I signed another record contract and got her tied up for another five years. Our contract with United Artists was ending. I had been searching for a record deal for six months. I had shopped a lot of different deals trying to get another contract and finally I landed one with Al Bennett at Cream Records. He was going to get me 150000 then I was going to get 150000 guaranteed per year for four years. So pause. This is why I feel like Ike is full of shit. We already know that he's full of shit. The name of the book, I didn't read the first part. It's called The Confessions of Ike Turner Taking Back My Name. Okay, my bad for not giving you the full title. In this book, he's speaking in a way that is trying to explain his behavior during the Ike and Tina Turner years. But what he's doing is revealing his shenanigans because sometimes the more a person talk, the more they dig a hole for themselves. And the fact that he's saying, I was going to get 150,000 guaranteed per year for four years. He did not say we were going to get because the whole judge is wrapped around Tina the Turner. I Turner may run the machine, but Tina Turner is the machine. It was a five year contract with two one year options. I finally landed the contract on a Monday. We were leaving to play Dallas on Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. And by the time I got back home the following Monday, the lawyer would have drawn up 
the papers and I was going to sign the contract. Now I have power of attorney over Tina Turner. Tina, you better check if it's still good. Ooh. So that's a dig at Tina Turner and whatever nigga or non ninja that she messing with. So Tina has got to break up with me before I get back to town. Because if she don't, and if I sign that contract, she is hooked to this record deal for another five years. She has to she, do it right there on one of those four days we're in Dallas. Now, what he's about to get into next is the scene in the car. So he's going to provide his recollection of the scene. And it's similar to what Tina Turner said. He mentioned that white Yves Saint Laurent suit, which I was disappointed about because I need him to talk about that white Yves Saint Laurent suit. Okay. I need, like I've said a thousand times, I ain't got the Yves Saint Laurent money. What I need is for Target to come up with their rendition of the white Yves Saint Laurent, Saint Laurent suit. So then I can go around there and buy me one for about $72, the whole suit. And, and, and wear that thing like it is the original, okay? But pay attention because it's similar, but it's slightly different. What happened was, and this is goddamn women for you, man. I had been up for five days in the studio recording. That Thursday morning when the time came for us to go to Dallas to play, the car pulled up in the alley at the back of the studio. Claude, my trumpet player, and Thomas, Tina, and Rhonda came in to get me. I had been up for five days. I hadn't had nothing to eat, and I was really tired. I didn't even change my clothes. I just ran upstairs to the apartment, pulled on my coat, and reached in a bowl for a handful of those little chocolate kisses. Those chocolate things inside silver because I knew I was going to get hungry when I came down. So far, the same storyline, okay? Now, again, I'm going to say what I said before. If I got my whole good, beautiful, white St. Laurent pantsuit on, bitch, don't touch me. I don't care if your hand don't got any chocolate tea mess all over it. Don't fucking touch me. I got on a white suit, Ike. And, and that would irritate me. And you know, by this time, Tina is to the level where she is fed up with Ike and his shenanigans. Okay? just She just irritated by him. And in my spirit, I feel like she just don't respect him anymore. And with us women, if we don't respect you, bruh, we'll step over you. Okay, even if your ass was on fire, we'll, we might not spit on you. So I got outside to the car and my hands were full. I reached to Tina and said, hey, Tina, hold these. Now, not in my Eve St. Laurent pantsuit. You got me messed up, Ike, in too many ways. She just looked at me and snobbed her nose and looked away. Okay, where's the problem? I got on my Eve St. Laurent white pantsuit, bruh. Claude took the kisses from me and I got in the car. Now she knows damn well this is the way to get me to knock her ass off, man. To start ignoring me and shiz. Father, father. 